good morning everyone so in the last session we are trying to discuss about the what we identified in the last session string security we identified here so now we'll we'll try to discuss about the email information so later we'll try to identify the the one of the important framework called acuta framework so how this particular acuta framework is going to identify so that we need to identify here okay so for these two sections here first we'll come up with the email information to identify this particular email related section now what we need again we need to go back to the our maven repository so inside this particular maven repository so we need to add the starter here so what is the starter we need to add basically here we need to add the same starter whatever we are trying to discuss about the starter email so whenever i'm trying to add this particular email you can see here spring boot starter email we are having this now so this is also updated inside this particular 2.7.3 versions here now what i will do i will try to copy this and i will go to this this particular palm.xml inside the palm.xml whatever we implemented in the last session whatever we implemented in the last session i'm going to keep this okay so here you can see it is trying to build this particular changes here okay now so these are all the changes are added now you can see here we are able to see the so spring boot started dot mail okay so this is we need to identify so let me uh change the background color of theme okay so this is it is trying to provide the the dependency information so this is the the starter dependency we are discussing here and uh, now what i will do here i am going to add the this particular starter so whenever we are adding this particular starter so by default the java mail sender whatever the java mail sender we discussed in the last example if i open so where we discuss this section inside this particular spring if i will open this particular email service here the java java mail sender so by default this particular java mail sender it is going to create because of this particular starter so this is the the object is going to create internally so now what we need to provide here we need to provide the property so to whom we need to send this particular information here okay now i'm going to add this particular property so to add this particular property first what we need we need to go to the application dot property file so inside this particular application dot property file now i'm trying to add this particular section here so this logger okay so we can run on this otherwise we'll try to continue the instead of mongodb we can move on to the postgres database because we already identified this example here now we'll try to use this particular broker url after this now you can see here we need to write the spring dot mail related properties here so now you can see here we are having host here so whatever the host we used here so we need to add this particular host here so in the spring boot basically we are going to get more than 200 configure properties here so these are all the properties so basically it will try to set as a method uh, like uh, it said it will try to set as a method parameter if you see whenever i'm trying to create this particular mvc config so if i go to open here so this is the host here okay so how we are setting this particular host basically we are trying to set this particular host with the help of this particular method here but now now internally when we are trying to discuss about the spring boot how we are setting this particular property how we are setting so with the help of this particular key and value pair here getting the point so this is the the mail host here so now after this 
uh, what I will do spring dot again it will try to connect with the mail gate and you can write the port section so what is the the port we are trying to use it something like 587 okay and after this spring dot mail dot what we can provide here something like if you want to provide the additional properties you can provide here so otherwise now you can see so protocol basically by default it is trying to providing SMTP so what we can do here we can provide the the this section this is the protocol we are going to use it here I'm going to make SMTP and after this spring dot mail dot username so what is the, the username we used in the earlier example where we implemented here so this is the username spring dot mail dot password so what is the, the previous password so I'm going to copy all the previous sections only okay so this is the password so after this pass particular password spring dot mail dot anything we are missing j and a name is not required property so we'll see so if this particular property is required or not so i hope most of the cases is are not required yet okay so we configure this particular mail related so here you can write the hash and you can write email okay so email configuration so this is we need to add here now after adding this particular section what we need here we need to enable the So instead of trying to connect with the uh, like HD database, now what we can do, we'll try to connect with the Postgres database. So to connect with this example with the Postgres, now what we need here, somewhere I hope we commented the database. Okay, we did not comment it. So we did not add a, the Postgres database here. Now what I will do, I will go to the palm.xml. I'll copy this. started so these two section it is not required here So I'm trying to resolve this particular dependencies here. So what happens here? Okay, maybe he's ex he's trying to take the earlier version. So I'm trying to refresh this. Oh, where is we can see? Okay, four to it's time to load three six versions only. Okay, so whatever we added, it is time to load the previous versions here. So it is related to the version conflict here. SQL injection CVSS. Okay. We'll go to here. Which version of this Postgres is trying to download here? We need to. Okay, because of this, it's trying to get this. So basically. This is the, the older version. Why it is not updating?
okay so we'll see now it is updated to this so for 4.2.1 version it is updated okay anyway after updating this now what we are doing so we added data jp validations and mongodb security now so this particular we can comment out this so this can is not required because we are trying to communicate with our postgres database okay so now what we will do here we'll try to identify so it is not this it is trying to remove this okay and after this now what we can do we'll try to go back to the uh log 4j Okay, so not required this particular log 4j. We'll try to connect with the log back only. Okay, so this is we are trying to add here. Now after this, now what we will do? We'll try to go to the whatever we implemented with help of this particular S2 database. So same section we'll implement here. So I commented out this and we'll go to the user repository. Okay, so instead of connecting this particular Mongo template here, now what we can do? So we can go for the private Hibernate template. So we'll connect with the Hibernate template and I'm trying to remove the Mongo template here. In place of Mongo template, I'm trying to add Hibernate template here. So here, Hibernate template. Okay, we'll remove this. So it is not required this constructor. Okay, what happening internally? I want a template not found. So we'll see later. So what happened this load random value? Mm. Okay, somewhere we commented this method, but finally, this method is not required here. Why we are getting this error message? No means of Hibernate template found. Okay, Hibernate template is not available, so it is there. From where it is trying to load ORM and this ORM is coming under the okay so this will available anyway we'll define this now what we can do here I burn a template dot save. So what we can provide here? Registration. Okay, so registration we provided here and uh, so save details we can call here. 
and from here we'll try to create the login section so login login is equals to new login okay after this particular new login now here we need to set the values login dot username registration not get username login dot set password so set password here and finally our banner template dot save login okay so these methods i am trying to return null okay so why i am getting this alert service so where we are sending this alert service here so we missed this particular section could not auto wire alert service dot send user alert registration okay so this is we implemented the changes now what i will do okay let me run this okay it's a spring boot applications only let's see so why this error is getting i have a template okay mongodb will remove this so here instead of this particular document we can go for the entity and the table okay so where this particular id is trying to load not this particular id so id should be our java h dot persistence here whatever we discuss in the generated value the generator not generator strategy so we'll try to use the sequence here so these are all the the simple uh, files i'm going to use it and after this in the registration section so login id and here so required constructor entity and the table so these are all the sections we are going to provide okay so this is we are trying to use this section so we'll go back to the home controller uh, somewhere we are getting an error so whole file we'll try to refresh this where i am getting an error okay so i think i am not getting any error in the home file so this is all about the repository sections so here only this getting okay we'll see so this error is resolved or not um, okay i hope we uh, cover all things and uh, only one pending we are uh, we need to add the database configurations information so we'll see first what kind of the exceptions we are going to get this is the the default one now you can see so we are getting hibernate template that could not found here so constructor spring boot to require the the hibernate template so we are getting this particular hibernate template exception here so 
So this is why it is throwing an error. Could not auto wire. Why it is not auto wiring? Basically, the bean is available here. Okay, let me go to the session factory if it is not available. So we'll identify this. Okay, so Hibernate section it is not adding. Let me come up with our own configuration classes here. Session factory also it's not available. Let's see. Palm.xml we added uh, data JPA. Okay, so it should work on this. Let me refresh this section. So now data JPA is available and Hibernate core also is available internally. So we can use Hibernate related sections here. So why? Uh, it is not loading. Okay, where is a ORM? I hope inside this we will get ORM. ORM also it's there. Inside the ORM definitely we'll get the the particular Hibernate template. So it is the transaction bean score. Okay. We'll identify this. So why we are getting this? Uh, Hibernate section. Let me build this first. So maybe some changes are not loading, I'm thinking. So we'll see what happens here. Is there is no palm direct? Acha, now we are under this. There is no palm directory. Okay. So why it is not loading? Let me go to this particular file. Replace. We see this. Okay, so what is an error we are getting? Uh, here. So unsatisfied the dependency. So uh, data source, okay, database initializer defined. Mm, data source throw an exception. 
ओके सो इयर इट इज रिलेटेड टू द ड्राइवर क्लास सो दिस इज वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग एंड नाउ सो वी कैन नॉट यूज दिस पर्टिकुलर लाइक एच टू डेटा बेस वॉट एवर द एच टू डेटा बेस वी आर यूजिंग सो वी आर गेटिंग एन एक्सेप्शन सो दैट इज करेक्ट एंड हियर यू कैन सी सो द ड्राइवर क्लास कॉल ओर जी एच टू ड्राइवर सो हियर इट इज शोइंग द मेसेज नाउ वॉट आई विल डू आई विल कॉपी दिस डेटा बेस प्रॉपर्टीज के सो वेर वी प्रोवाइडेड सो लेट मी गो टू दप्लीकेशन डॉट प्रॉपर्टीज सो दिस इज द अवर ड्राइवर क्लास ओके सो ड्राइवर क्लास ने पोस्ट क्रेस ड्राइवर एंड यू आर एल सो दिस इज द सेम यू आर एल ओके एंड आफ्टर दिस यूजर ने and oh, password so after this what we are having have been a dialect so let add a dialect section so where is a dialect section we are having so data source basically this property is also will provide based on the the starters whatever we are going to add okay so data source dot and we can identify the dialect section so where we are having this particular dialect uh, so here we are we are not having this dialect section i think it is not available in the data source spring dot so what we can provide data dot do we have any ibernet related section no jpa so let's see uh jpa jpa repository 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 enable not this i think spring dot jpa dot dialect section so i bunne ddl auto and uh, this is we need so every time we can go for the update spring dot jpa dot and we can go for the same hibernate we can go for the show sql so we can make true find the last one where we are having this particular dialect section data dot okay so what is the property we are using highlight uh, hibernate dialect only right let's see mapping implicity hibernate user in okay not this jpa dot data source so this is sql dialect not this okay we'll identify from the google so what exactly the property let's see so if we are not we will get an exception we'll identify that now again i am trying to run mm, i want net template orm5 so it is available right so org framework i want net 5 i want a template so why it is not showing okay let me run from again here so 
so again i'm trying to uh, build the application from the command line okay what we are getting okay so no qualifying bean net template available expected at least one qualifies out of dependency no qualifying bean we are getting okay dependency so maybe um, why this hibernate template is missing reload from the disk so sync successfully repository auto wire let's see pom.xml is there any reflection changes we are getting here so whatever we are adding uh, all the changes are available here let's see here or so 5322 okay this particular class is coming from the where 5322 or different one Five three double two only. So why it is not loading this? I will need template. So okay. Mm, session factory local session factory bean also it's available. Okay. What happens here? why it is not loading okay now what i will do instead of this particular postgres so we'll connect with uh, again it will change right uh okay now what we can identify got it so let's see with the uh, hibernate template okay we'll try connecting uh, external configuration so we'll see whether it will work or not so spring configuration so i'm going to make configuration and do what we can do we'll try to copy the whatever the required changes so java mail i am going to use and uh, properties this properties also not required yet i have a net template and uh, another section local session factory bin so by default data source is going to load uh if it is not loading uh 
ओके ओके सो विल नॉट यूज दिस लॉग इन एंड सो रजिस्ट्रेशन आईबर नेट प्रॉपर्टीज एंड नेट ट्रांसक्शन मैनेजर समवेर वी आर कॉलिंग दिस लोड प्रॉपर्टीज okay so we'll see this so how it is going to work now i come up with a external configuration we'll identify now what kind of the exception we are going to get so driver class name must not be empty okay so driver class name must not be empty this is we are getting so i think it is not loading this so if it if it want to load now driver class name we need to copy this so url and do username password okay now we'll run okay null pointer exception properties so spring configuration 53 so 53 so this is we are getting okay now hibernate dialet what is the dialet we provided so dialet uh, will keep same one whatever we used in the application properties okay so after this dialet section is completed and show is kill and another one is ddl section okay now i configure this hibernate template explicitly so we should run the application successfully without getting any exception now now you can see application is started okay so here the recession table also altered this particular table so this is the way of explicitly configuring all the objects here. so now what we are doing is we are trying to providing the default auto configuration so like we we need a explicit configuration so same thing whatever we did with help of the the spring mvc so same way we connected the spring boot also okay now what i will do here i am going to run this so local host what is the post it is running 9090 so it is expecting the security spring security now we are connecting to the application so now what i will do spring email username 
so password also I'm going to make as an email something like a phone number so here okay we did not implemented the email section so just we configure the email so now what we will do we need to write this particular email section if I want to write this email section so I'm going to copy this email service so the same email service I'm going to paste it here okay now I want to stop this server so here what we are doing is so instead of this particular register so we have a registration object here something like a welcome message so this is the email ID we are going to send here and this method we need to call so from where we can call this inside the repository only we can call here so here I'm going to write private email service email service and I will copy this and here I will paste this email service here email service is equals to email service and here only here only we can send here email service dot send email registration okay so this is the steps we need to follow and uh, uh, yesterday I stopped this particular active MQ I need to run this active MQ also start this particular active MQ okay now it is running so I'm going to run again our applications here so meanwhile here we can see this particular admin this is our AppTMQ okay so now finally application is also started here now I'm trying to clear this particular console so we'll go back to here registration so by directly it is expecting the security first spring security and after this spring email and username spring email password so what is the password we can provide something like email okay phone number some random number and here so whatever the email we want to provide so this is the email we need to provide here uh, something like uh, so could you please send any one of your email ID so we'll add here okay let me copy this so CT I'm trying to give email only so just for identifying some zip code here okay so these are all the some random information we selected now I'm trying to click on save so if everything is go successful so we should get the home page here now we'll see uh, what happening here so create the something we are getting a session related exception now you can see SNTP send fail exception we are getting here now we need to identify this what exactly this exceptions here so something is expecting here uh, this is expecting start required to send an email let me copy because we need to add one more property whatever the property we are add is start let me go to the email service here what we added this particular email properties okay this is we need to add let me enable this go to the our property file Spring dot mail dot uh, GND 
is expecting the property map of okay so this particular property let's see uh, here we can see so what exactly the property we can add here not to this so we'll identify okay so instead of identifying i'm going to copy this we'll see this so i'm going to stop the server and uh, again we are going to run this okay so we need to fix this basically the email related some property we are missing here spring email spring underscore email email password and uh, something like uh, so what is a uh, so gvs2020 at gmail.com okay so these two i'm going to provide as a email only address for nine to city some random number okay so let me save on this delete this basically not required here so now sequence we are getting here so after sequence so we are coming back to the home page here okay so i hope everything is completed successfully so first uh, we'll see this uh, earlier it was one now it should be two year so whatever we are discussing it should be two yeah so it is pushed successfully whatever this particular spring boot alert name so we push this particular message now finally what we need to identify so we need to identify the outlook here so whatever the outlook we are using uh what is a username we are having so i will go to the sent item now you can see this is a the email is sent to this particular gmail account here okay so welcome to spring application so this is the the body whatever we added here okay so i did not modify any changes so just i copy this so if you go to uh, where, 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 where user repository and send email so this is a message welcome to spring application so this is the subject here and this is a text message okay so subject how we are getting so welcome message now here you can see this is a subject something like a welcome message and this is a text message so inside the body we are adding this particular text and to whom we are sending an email so this is the person so gvs so 2020 something like gmail.com we are sending here okay so this is a, the way of sending an email information here getting the point and here we identified another important section so this is the the way of writing the explicit configuration so where we are writing something like a spring configuration this is 
we come up with a explicit even though the uh, starter we identified here getting the point so even though we added this particular data starter so something like where we added this one even though we added this particular data starter but what we are doing is earlier when we are trying to communicate with the h2 database here so we did not provide the explicit configuration directly whatever the the database name and url username password what we are using so just we copy and now we come up with a explicit configuration here okay so any questions here regarding this particular email sending as well as this particular hibernate template related here okay so if we don't have anything here now we need to discuss about the another important uh, section call so this is we'll call it as a the production ready features so the production ready features is going to provided by so one more starter so the starter basically we'll call it as a uh, like a starter acuter so this is the another important section we need to discuss it this is provided by internally spring boot itself so this section we are not going to discuss in the spring gate because so this is the the starter which is introduced in the spring uh, spring boot only it will try to give you the your applications information so basically it will try to give you the the number of additional features okay in the fence so it's going to provide the the number of additional features to help the monitor the our production applications here once application sent into the production environment if we want to identify the how your application is working fine uh, recording your object creation and re recording your uh, like uh, request information so as well as you, if you are identifying the memory related section so we can hide the starter something like acuter starter so that by default it will try to provide the some information so if we want to find out the more information so we need to enable those here so now what i'm doing is here i'm trying to add this particular starter dependency so we don't need this section so this is the long back one and uh, okay so now we added all the sections so whatever we need here we added all the sections here now finally so let me refresh and stop the server so stop the server and uh, refresh this so that uh, whatever the required dependencies we are expecting all the required dependencies are going to downloaded now you can see inside the maven tab here you can identify so how these sections are going to provide so here we are having the starter something like acuter starter so it will try to give you the the application health related sections here okay so i'm not doing anything just i'm trying to uh, refreshing this So that's it so we are not going to do any changes here so once you refresh you can start your applications here okay so application is started here now we need to identify you can see here so this is a message so what exactly this particular message is providing is so the benefit base path acuter so here if we want to identify anything so we need to use this particular acuter sections here okay now what we can do first we need to log in this application so if i want to log in now what we can do click on this particular login provide your security okay click on sign in now after this here what i what i want to do so here i will copy this acuter path if i am going to provide this now you can see so it is trying to providing the some urls here 
get in the pen. So here you can see what are the URL it is trying to providing. First one is acuter, so template, and another one is health section. If I want to copy this, so you can see. Basically, it will try to provide the health section. So if you read this, it is trying to provide the section here. Up and running, fine here. The whatever the status we are having, the health section application is running. Successfully, application is running. So this is something like up. Application is uh, working fine. So this is providing. So what is the endpoint we are using? Here we are trying to use health endpoint here. We are trying to use this particular health endpoint. So if I want to identify anything related to the your application, so we need to append with this particular acuter and it will try to provide the all the information here. So I know another important information what we need here. If you go to this, so what we are having here. So after this particular health, if you are trying to providing any path, it will try to provide the so specific information here. Okay, so by default we can access this acuter or we can go for this particular health here. And if we want to add this particular after health section, so you need to add some configurations under this particular the property file. So then only it will try to enable this particular section. So now we'll see what are all the the configurations we need to add here. Getting the point. So basically this will give you the information about your applications once your application is running in the production environment. So if you want to test in the dev environment or in the any other environment, you can add this starter. Okay, but most probably we'll try to use in the dev environment here. Okay, now so to understand this, first what we need. So we need to add this particular uh, configuration. So if I want to add this particular configuration, now what I will do? Again, I will go to this particular section call application dot property file and here uh, spring dot management. Okay, uh, what is it's time to start? So we need to identify this. So it is not going to start with the uh, spring here. Directly, it is trying to start with the uh, management here. Okay, so management dot. Management dot web related. So we need to add this particular web. We need to enable here. Here web. So it's trying to include only health section. So we need to use star so that uh, where is the star? So that it will try to add all the web related sections. So by default. What is included here? So it is trying to include it only health related section. Now what I will do here. I'm going to provide the so all the sections here. So let me start this whether we can get the web related sections or not. Okay, so it is completed. After this directly if I'm trying to run first it will ask the username and password Spring security so you can see so earlier we have identified only few mapping information now we are identifying so a lot of mapping information so because what we did so I given the option to this particular star so that it will try to connect with these are all the sections here. Okay now if you want to Identify your beans here. So now you can see these are all the beans are created. Get in the point. So these are all the beans. So if you want to identify your beans here, so whatever the beans we created here. So if you go to this section, something like a alert service. Alert service. So alert service basically we suggested with a service annotation. Now we identify whether this service and uh, alert service object is created or not. Now you can see. So here we are trying to create this particular alert service. So, so this is the user repository class. It is internally it is dependence with Hibernate template, alert service, and email service. If I'm going to open the user repository, you can easily understand here. So let me open the user repository. So here we are having three dependencies. 
okay so email uh, like it's like a email service alert service hibernate template the same information it is trying to providing okay here it is trying to providing same hibernate template alert service email service and where this particular alert service is created so if you want to understand here this is the service here so now you can see singleton scope we are using it get in the pen so what is the type we are having this is the type called alert service and where it is available so this is the dot class file get in the pen so this is the the dot class file here so this is a, the way of creating this particular beans so you can identify for your application how many beans are created internally these are the beans are created by default spring boot here these are all the beans you can identify anything so we want to identify the data source okay so data source how it is created here so it is like a instead of providing the driver manager they are trying to use a pool uh, like a whatever we are providing data source pool metadata provided configurations so this is the another data source is trying to use and if you identify um, hibernate template so now if you want to identify hibernate template now you can see so this is the hibernate template is created and what is the the type here this is the type so hibernate file hibernate template and what is the scope we are using same scope called singleton by default it is try to use the same because these are all the sections we already discussed in the spring related okay now if i am going to provide another important section uh, like uh, so what we can do environment so if i am trying to providing the environment section so what are all the environment we are having this basically these are all the all the dependency sections here now you can see so start a logging gear auto configure so and internally jackson related section and you can see context here so spring expression we are having so time card related section getting the point and data jpa aop related jboss logging so we, what are the dependencies we are having all the dependencies are added here so now here you can see smtp properties so you can see so email password and username spring email username here so this is something like username and password we are getting as a star so the password will be hide and here you can see the data source related password so now you can see username postgres so password is something like stars here get in the pen so this particular files are loading from the where this is the file called application dot property file here get in the pen so this is the the environment information so it is trying to load here basically so the default environment we are using so yesterday we discussed about the the profile profile will give you the information about the Uh, which environment we are going to communicate here so right now we are not providing any profile here because in the real time scenarios we are going to use the profile the profile will give you the specific uh, configuration file based on the environment here okay so you can identify the this is the url of this particular database here so this is the environment and now if you want to identify the uh, like uh, uh, eap dumps basically object here so what are the heap dump so you can see it is trying to providing the download sections get in mind so this is the heap dump so how many objects are created what is the heap dump of this particular sections here okay so and uh, another section you can identify the metrics here so basically this is not something like a uh, memory related sections here get in the mind and of the final one we can identify mappings so what are the mapping we are using so mapping basically uh, basic mapping we can see here whatever we added in our example so the mapping we can identify here. so you can see registration and uh, what we are having so we did not add much section so registration as well as something login here getting the point so here so something like errors okay so you can see load login info and uh, these are all the uh, if we can see it, these are all the urls so what are all the urls we implemented in our application so it will try to show up the so those url informations here so it's like a it's like a what you can identify 
So whatever I provided, the dispatch is already how it is identifying the handler mapping. And the same way, if you are discussing about the spring, uh, like uh, spring security, the security filter chain, how it is communicating. So those information, it is we can identify inside this particular mapping section here. Get in fact. So this is the one of the advantage we are going to get from the Spring Boot whenever we are adding this particular acute starter here. So any questions on this acute starter? Suresh, I just want to ask one question. Earlier you are showing the JBoss, right? Uh, are we using a Tomcat? Or See, basically. No, no, we are not using. So uh, Spring Boot is not going to support the JBoss. Basically, it will support by default time card, JT and under two. So these are all the three servers it is going to support. But these are all the dependencies uh, where we have seen. Basically, yes, yes, I identified that. Basically, these are all the internal dependencies. Okay, so I also identified that, but basically it is the internal dependency Spring Boot is going to use. Okay. So this is the, the simple change we need to add. Uh, let me show you that also. If you go to the palm.xml, where we are having. So this is the timecat. Now if you see, this is the, the timecat we are using. So you can comment out this particular timecat starter, you can add. So either Jetty or you can go for the undertow. So these are the three by default Spring Boot is going to support. Okay, so any other questions? So another important section we need to add. So something like a dev tools. So this is the Spring Boot dev tool we are going to add here. Basically, so what it will do, uh, basically it will try to give the changes whenever we are trying to modify the file. So without this particular server restart here, when you are trying to add the changes here, for example, Okay, so now what I'm doing here, I'm trying to start the server. So here you can see, so this is the dev tool starter, it is added here. Now what is the advantage we are going to get based on this particular dev tool? So it will try to give you the, the basic information about the, so if you are trying to modify multiple times instead of uh, restarting your application. So once you save the file, so once you save this particular file, it will try to provide the automatic uh, information here. Okay, so now you can see, so application is started. Now I will clear this and uh, something we can add here. We'll go to the email service. Okay, so maybe by default, it is disabled. We need to add the enable plugin here. So what is the plugin we can enable? Uh, dev tool, oh, restart enable tool. So I think This is we need to add regarding this particular dev tool. Let me restart this. Okay. 
okay so this particular file has changed it now what i will do here i'm going to add the message here so what is the message we can add something like a we are trying to send a registration object into actium queue okay once i save this so we need to see so the server is going to be restarted here let me identify uh, what is the changes we can made the required information okay so i think so this section we can discuss uh, this dev tool when we are trying to discuss about the microservices because microservices also internally it will communicate with help of this particular spring boot here okay so this dev tool i will discuss right now we completed the most of the stuff because of that it is not connecting uh, okay so i think so i i am expecting lot of stuff i completed in the spring boot so remaining now what we will do we'll try to discuss the uh, microservices so so why we need to discuss about the microservices again what are the the drawbacks we are having inside this particular the spring and the spring boot related kit okay so tomorrow we are going to discuss the introduction part about the microservices and we are going to create so multiple services here so how this particular multiple services are going to communicate it so those sections also we are going to discuss from the tomorrow onwards here okay so any questions regarding our today session okay so if we don't have anything so we can continue tomorrow so another important section we are going to discuss tomorrow